Hello everyone. I apologize in advance if my, my voice cuts out or if I don't seem very clear or cohesive in my narrative on this video. I'm feeling kind of under the weather with the allergies and cold going around, but without further ado, one of your classmates agreed to allow me to use their data that they submitted as a review before the actual final project was due, and I wanted to take this opportunity to share with you some of the pointers that I'm going to share with them. So that way maybe you can apply it to your project and give you a heads up on some things. The first thing that I would like to point out to this person and to everyone else is that I, I feel like this is this is a great start. This is a great start, but it's not finished as far as the final project would go. And that's not a slight against this person at all. It's just that they've done an excellent job of bringing data together and starting with an idea, but it, it seems more like this project is in its brainstorming period and the reason I say that is because for one there's no there's no indication as to what most of the information is you can tell that the title of the map is Hurricane Ivan Path and you can deduce even not knowing much about what's going on or what the, the purpose of the map is that these red icons hurricane icons probably indicate various places that the hurricane hit land. And you can also see over in the table of contents that there are baselines and upon zooming in a little bit more you can see that the coastlines of the states that were affected are, are highlighted or a different color. However, there's no there's no legend on the map to indicate whether or not it's, what's what's significant, what should be pointed out aside from of the other things and the first thing I would do is suggest to this person to, to narrow your narrow your search in a little bit narrow your scope and what I mean by that another way to say would be even just use this as a, a literal example Hurricane Ivan really only affected the Gulf of Mexico and some of the states in so if you were to zoom in you know this this is obviously the United States here and if you move your title up and all this information could stay pretty much where it is I'm just being picky but you really wanna get rid of superfluous information like the rest of the United States wouldn't be necessary if you just wanted to focus in on the Gulf of Mexico and the shorelines where Ivan did the most damage or Ivan stayed on category four or five or whatever it was the longest and also I would say let's open up one of these like the Texas intersects see in the table there's over 10,900 or almost 11,000 entries for this for this the Texas intersects alone probably so many that they don't show up it's just, it's just too many along the side here and I would say that this information also could go and I'll suggest something to replace it and use that same symbol in just a minute but uh, to to go further into what you might want to focus on. The purpose of geographic information systems is to tie any type of information you want to to geographic features. And it's not so much just to slap shape files into a map and, and then go from there. You want to be able to start where this person has started, which they did a great job, saying, okay, I've got, I've got this base data. I've got reference lines, I've got the main lines for the coastline, I've got all these various points where I might be able to tie something to actual landfall hurricane damages but that's where that's where you want to start getting a lot more specific it's like okay well what would what would I really like to show and you don't you don't have to have much more data than this and I'm gonna I'm gonna get into that in just a minute but I would add to always make sure you have your legend and all I did was go to insert my legend and I have all the things that are in the table of contents get rid of that because the legend is obviously the legend Okay, so somewhere on your map you want to have a legend so that way when somebody looks at it they could say, okay, well I, I know that this color indicates Florida and that's why maybe Florida isn't all the way lined out because these are the only places where the hurricane actually made landfall. And you always want to go through, again we're still on the layout, and make sure that you, you rename some of these things because I have no I have no idea what that is. In OS 80K, I have no idea. 
and even going I can't open the, the attribute table because I'm not sure <coughs> where where the data is in the file that was sent so it needs to be it needs to be named something a little more straightforward now this the Florida baseline you can I can kind of tell what that is but even then if your end user doesn't know then you might want to change it to something like Florida landfall and I may be misinterpreting that so the person can correct me if that's if that's the case but it makes a difference to look at the map in the end and be able to say okay well I know AL underscore baseline probably means the shoreline for Alabama but you always want to consider the fact that a layperson may be viewing your end work and that's why something like Florida landfall might be a little more appropriate much better for the end product and that's that's really all I've got aside from one thing you might want to do is add a base map to this and you can go in and you don't have to choose imagery but let's say you just wanted to choose the National Geographic you could add it and if when my internet catches up to me and everything loads I hope yeah so now you can see just just doing that I've got a much nicer clear map that's obviously the United States and Central America and doing something like that and you don't have to there's no programming or no fancy stuff involved it's just something that ArcMap allows you to do that makes your maps much better in the end and just make sure you remember the little trick from insert dynamic text and then this service layer credits that was in one of the PDFs that I made it gets rid of this citation down here and you can move it keep it on your map so you give credit where credit's due but that way it's not it's not taking up space down here if that's not where you want it okay so let me just just in case you missed what I did there see when you bring in your images down here any type of base map it's gonna have this notation and that's a pretty good place to have it but if you don't want it there let's zoom back out go to insert dynamic text and then service layer credits and you can move it around okay I'm gonna leave it there for now because that's okay and then one trick you might want to use or it's not a trick but you notice that this doesn't show very well so you can bring up the draw menu and all I did was right click on the open gray space bring up the draw menu and where did it go oh there it is sorry okay you can use the draw menu to add a rectangle to your map to encompass that and you can say you just right click on the square that you drew tell it to send it back oops I sent it too far sorry bring forward and now after you change the order you have something that helps your legend show up much better but the focus is still here on your map and that's all I have for the layout I'll go into the main map and some suggestions in the next part of this video